Welcome everybody to Beat the Shift Baseball. This is episode 122 for Tuesday, October 5th. It is MLB postseason time. October is here. We are all so excited. I'm Alex Uwe. I'm here today with Farbode Markazi and Ray Estrada. And as I mentioned already, today's podcast is going to be all about the playoffs. The wildcard game, as of when we're recording this, is tomorrow, the AL wildcard game, and that will officially kick things off. We'll go through all of the potential matchups throughout the postseason, which which might sound like a lot, but it'll, it'll be fine. We'll, we'll get through it. So without further ado, let's let's go ahead and do that. Uh, actually, with more further ado, you guys should follow us at BeTheShiftBP on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, see what we're saying throughout the postseason. We want to hear what you have to say about all the craziness as well. So, yeah, at BeTheShiftBP. All right, now without any further ado, Farbod, Ray, how are you guys doing? Good. Doing fantastic. It feels like another October with my halos out of it. So... Uh, it just it just feels right, doesn't it? No, no. Hey, angels. the Angels played. We played meaningful games in October. That's all I care about. We spoiled the Mariners. Oh, yeah. and everybody hates you for. Yeah, it. that's you should not feel proud of that. Every, uh, that was probably the most heartbreaking <laughs> thing about. You guys got bailed out by the Red Sox and Yankees winning anyways. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's okay. So you can blame them. But after all the things that. Uh, their team president that was fired said earlier this year, and then uh, just Jerry Depoto. I I was I was rooting for my Halos. Um, I'm yeah, like, no sorry. kidding. How awesome would have been to to have like a, how it started and just like the team president's face, and then how it how it ended like going to the playoffs. Like, I still feel like this is a great uh, like momentum booster for the Mariners going into the next year. I like they, they got the young guys. To compete. I also don't like how they're doing Kyle Seager, but that's a different topic for a different day. Yeah, well, I it can it can kind of be a topic for today. M- maybe not as extension, but just the Mariners' story in general, and it, it kind of in tandem with that, the Blue Jays too, and the incredible season that they had. Both of them will be missing the playoffs though, uh, because this was just one of the most insane year of standings that I can remember anyway with just how evenly dispersed I mean we had four teams going into the final day of the season on Sunday with a very legitimate shot at at least getting a forcing a tiebreaker for the wild card game and of course the least chaotic outcome did come about because the Red Sox and the Yankees both won their matchups and they were the teams that were a game ahead uh, of the Blue Jays and the Mariners, but man, oh man! I, if anything, I feel worse for the Blue Jays, absolutely destroying the O's, taking care of business on Sunday for Game One Sixty Two. They must have been riding so high, and only to see the Red Sox not only win but come from behind against the Nationals to to take that game uh, after, uh, you know, the fate is out of their own hands at that point so uh, heartbreaking there heartbreaking for you know the Mariners Kyle Seager especially had a very very moving tribute uh you know getting taken out to a standing ovation once they were officially eliminated and just you know that's that's the stuff you look at in any in any year in any career and it it makes you tear up a little bit. It doesn't matter who you are. If you get sports, then then it gets to you. It was it was a very touching moment with a full, uh, you know, ri- disappointed but still passionate Mariners crowd there. Uh, yeah. So if you guys have anything else to, to was, add with your experiences, like watching all it, of that go down, it was electric. Um, I mean, it's heartbreaking seeing. Like as a baseball fan, it's heartbreaking seeing it's two teams like that with all that momentum, all that hope go down. And I'm not gonna even go down the rabbit hole of, well, they were in, they put themselves in this position in the first place. No, it's they they did what they needed to do. They controlled what they needed to do. But it just cars didn't fall where they may. Um, there's two things. One of them is uh, not a wild card team or a playoff team, but. Ryan Zimmerman hasn't officially announced his retirement, but 
based on how Sunday went, that was also emotional. Um, kind of a changing of the guards there in Washington. Everything he he was the he was that franchise's like first guy, um, like literally so, their their first yeah, yeah. guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like like he 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 is um the that if you're talking about sports, Kyle Seeger and um Ryan Zimmerman that that emotion on Sunday was something else, and then with the Blue Jays, while it's heartbreaking right now. I'm really excited. It seems like it's going to be either not necessarily. I know I used this phrase earlier, but not necessarily a changing of the guards. But next year you're you're gonna have four teams in the AL East just battling it out for like if if the Rays, Red Sox, Yankees all sit, all continue to compete for the playoffs, you're gonna ha- also have the Blue Jays in there. And the Blue Jays might be better. It's yeah. just gonna be insane. I don't know how, but I want the CBA to fix this nonsense where like four of the best teams in baseball are all gonna be coming out <laughs> of the same division. Like, do something about this because the like we can talk about the the magic that the Mariners had all year long. They were not they were not a, a scary playoff threat in in anybody's mind outside of maybe just super riled up Mariners fans. But the Blue Jays very very well could have been world series contenders if they made it into the playoffs with the lineup that they have and it's it's not all young guys they have experienced postseason players they have really good starting pitching and like you know maybe a bullpen that's not as good as some other teams but they have a lot more firepower than i would argue like even the red Sox or you know some teams a lot of teams that are in the playoffs so yeah I'm not not just a little worried about like terrified of the Blue Jays for years to come as a Yankees fan. I just wanted to put that out there. That that is probably the most disappointing part is that you don't just lose out on a team with like a great story. You lose out on a World Series contending roster just because of this the circumstance really. And do you, is is that is that overreaching, Ray, or is that like is something that you agree with? Um in, in generally speaking with the the guys that they're running out there this year yeah i mean it's unfortunate to not see them in the playoffs um i mean boston hung on just well enough after that hot start and falling off but i mean to to finish with was it 90 91 was 91 the number. wins and still finish fourth in your division <laughs> is um yeah and I mean, also the highest run differential in uh for a non-playoff team since i want to say the early 2000s wow um yeah I, I mean it's it sucks and i mean i don't know what the cba can do to you know like like are they gonna make the cleveland spend so that they're for wild card <laughs> stuff like <laughs> like is there there was four teams in the east who went for it and they all were pretty good so um yeah it's i mean it sucks but it's just kind of the, the nature of it i mean the dodgers won 106 games and got to play on wednesday so yeah, yeah that's I, messed up uh, too <laughs> okay we have the, you the three of us had, the three of us had this conversation maybe a podcast two podcasts ago so you don't want it's, you don't want to do it rules. again. You don't want to do it again. No, that's we're not the rules. <laughs> no, that's that's the rules. And it like I have some uh, coworkers who are Dodger fans, and they're saying it's so unfair. I'm like, you're only upset about that because your team's it's not unfair. Position. It's it's not like it, yeah. it, like it like to me it's not unfair. It's just so frustrating that the like none of the bad teams could beat the Giants. Yeah, <laughs> like, the, the Padres <laughs> like like seemingly rolled over in Game 162, just like got destroyed after giving the Dodgers hope the day before and like and I mean like you can't the Rockies, just be a- the Rockies got swept twice at home this year and it was by the Giants twice in September um <laughs> yeah and I, I I'm not like outing all Dodger fans but it's just a lot of I've seen a lot of people say it's unfair they need to change the rules like well maybe it's funny because now a franchise that has a pretty active voice on social media is in that position so now it's unfair but before it's been a totally a fun competitive um, boost for Major League Baseball, and I don't know. I I think that's the rules. I think it's still fun. Um, if you want to change up the rules, 
this in this CBA, this is your opportunity. But there's no chance that this is going. The wild card system is going to go away. Um, I want to go back to one thing before we continue on. The most heartbreaking part of the Blue Jays, at least for me as a baseball fan, not making it is. I know I've said this before on podcasts. Rogers Center in playoff games, especially mm. the <laughs> being the fact that this is their third home stadium this season. Fourth. Um fourth home like the Blue Jays fourth home stadium this season. And then with how electric Rogers Center is dur- or was during those playoff runs with then Carnassio and Bautista. I I could only imagine how crazy it would be with this year's team and hopefully next year's. Yeah, for real, man. That that would have been something. We'll have to wait. We'll have to wait. Uh, it, it also, by the way, things things can be unfair, even if even if it is the rules. Like rules can be unfair. D- just saying. Oh, that's not... it's not like it, it it it's in the rules, so it's fair. Like it, it, I think people are complaining that the way the rules are doesn't make sense. But it, it I'm no. not gonna I'm not gonna go further myself with that. I I. <laughs> I, I... I agree with you that just because they're a rule, it doesn't mean that it's fair. But mainly the point I'm uh, making is the fact that there's this system has been in place for years, but only when a team like the Dodgers or um, one of the first years with the Pirates and the um, and the Yankees, it, that's what, yeah, that's when it starts coming out. And as those fans are starting to come out, I was like, win your games. I'm sorry. Those like are I, it, those it, are the only teams that win win enough games together. I don't know how the Pirates did it that one year, but yeah, like the reason that they're the only teams that complain about these problems is it's, it's coming out of the hundred plus win teams that are playing a one game playoff. That's it's not a coincidence. I mean, those hey, kudos are, to the Giants. Those, those teams have normally won those games, right? I mean, the the Pirates didn't because they're bad, but. Yeah, do we, um, so let's let's go ahead and start. That's I think that's a good transition because all right. So so what the Dodgers, the Dodgers are are in this situation. They they still have a chance to win a game, and then it's basically a, a fresh start going into the division series. And same goes on the American League side with, you know, the Red Sox and Yankees are are no slouches of wild card teams. Both of them certainly can go toe to toe with any other teams in the American League. So. With these wild card matchups, it is really as it is every year. Who's got who's got the best guy out there? And when you look at Red Sox versus Yankees, you all eyes are going to be on Garrett Cole at least to start things off because the Red Sox, we we say it a lot. People say it a lot. They're they're kind of the giants of the American League, and in that they don't have a the guy to carry them they they are a very well rounded team that will rely on production from a lot of places especially on the pitching side they get contributions from a lot of different places um but all eyes are gonna be on garrett cole so you know we'll start with the al side since it is chronologically sooner but do you do you think one side has an edge over the other in looking at the rosters, Ray, or do you think it, it really just will be wh- whoever has a better day? I mean, the well, the Yankees coming off that sweep in Fenway uh, just last weekend, mm-hmm. I think is, um, I think it's it's huge. Like they're coming in more even, um, kind of down the stretch. Uh, it'd be different, but I mean, we saw basically a playoff Stanton there, and, but I mean, it is a one game playoff, and. I mean, Evaldi is good, and he's performed well in the playoffs. Um, you know, he he lost that eighteen inning game, but that was the only run he gave up in seven innings. It was that eighteen uh, inning home run in the twenty eighteen World Series? Uh, and Garrett Cole has a, a kind of a middling record, not good, not bad, or he's good but not like great in uh, uh, winner take all games. I think he's like pitched in like he's gonna tie Roger Clemens for like the most. Uh, winner take all games pitch tomorrow. Jesus, I didn't uh, even I didn't even I realize five. that. I think the record I saw he's like one and two with like a three something ERA. Um, I mean he he did pitch uh game seven, I believe, right in the twenty nineteen World Series. I, uh, uh, I'm gonna say yes, 
Although uh, it, it, my memory is gonna no, need, he was left in the second. bullpen. That was all right then. No, never mind. But, anyway, um, yeah. So it's gonna be interesting. Like it's a very intriguing pitching matchup, uh, and you would think the Yankees had the advantage, but it's Yankees Red Sox as a one game wild card in Fenway. It's you know it is in a way the ultimate crowd shoot. So it's mm-hmm. it's gonna be fun, and um, well. I mean, we know Chris Sale is not pitching tomorrow because Alex Cora shut down shut that down very quick. Yeah, Chris Sale did pitch on Sunday, which would have been a two day rest for him. Um, and I'll also just note too because I was curious about this. Uh, it is raining right now in Boston. Tomorrow there shouldn't be any weather issues unless things change dramatically between now and then. Um. So that's good because that's always a scheduling nightmare if you're dealing with uh, things like that. So I I really don't know what else to say other than all all eyes are on Garrett Cole from the Yankee side of things. Rafael Devers is on an absolute tear right now. So I think I think it'd be uh, in the Yankees' best interest to just not give him anything to hit the entire time. And that's They're that's the key to their game. Boston. They're playing in Boston. Yeah. Oh, they are. What the heck? Yeah, the Red what Sox have the head to head record, and they finish uh, with the oh, same record. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah. My bad. Continue. No, we're all good. We might as well uh get get all the uh, important details out there now. Um. But yeah, really. Other than that, both <laughs> teams have very very good bullpens. Uh, should anything go wrong, and. I don't know, after a very difficult series offensively for the Yankees against the Rays versus the Red Sox getting the bats warm against, I don't even know who Washington's been throwing out there, but... um, Eric Fetty. Eric Fetty, yep, and the like. So maybe that'll have an impact, but (laughs) again, it really just comes down to who's going to come up and and have the better day, I think. I, I think last weekend where the Yankees swept isn't going to matter much. I, I don't think nope. that the struggles offensively for the Yankees this past weekend will, will matter much. I, 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 it'll be a pretty even playing field with a ton of energy, and it'll be fun. Uh, the Yankees have a losing record. Red, the Red Sox um, have, have that head-to-head record, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. It's 10 to 8. So it's not like ten to one nine. team's won. It's 10 to 9. It's not like one team's won seven more games head-to-head either and has drastically put themselves above the other i think both of these teams just were you mentioned the red sox were like the giants and on your argument of why i agree um but one thing the giants didn't do is go through swings this year and the red sox and the yankees both had moments where we're like man these guys are going to be insane they're definitely going to be um playoff contenders and they're going to run away with this thing and there were, there were points where like man aaron boone's job is on the line and then two weeks later, oh, Aaron Boone just saved his job. Two weeks later, oh, Aaron Boone's job is on the line. So it, it's not like either of these teams, no matter whose roster you think might have the slight advantage, it, it's the wild card. You, that's, why you, that's why you're playing. Whatever, whoever plays better tomorrow is going to be the winner. And that's very obvious and sounds kind of ignorant, but it's, there's not one guy or one player on either team that's necessarily unless Garrett Cole goes out there and throws a complete game shut up. I I'd like that. So I I think there's not much more to add other than our actual predictions. We are going to go through and do actual predictions for these as well and we'll release our full brackets on Twitter or Instagram uh just so we have them for record's sake. But uh I'll go Ray first who's who's winning the AL wild card. Um, I'm gonna take the Yankees in a tight one. I th- I think playoff Stanton just has another like 120 mile an hour home run somewhere. And Let's like eight, go. And uh, yeah, I think Yankees and I think a low scoring close game. Okay. Uh, how about you, Farbode? I think uh one of the pieces of news that was pretty, I don't know if it was ignored, but mostly ignored because the chaos didn't happen to tiebreakers didn't happen but if they were to happen and we were going to go to those four team tiebreakers 
the Yankees chose to go to Fenway Park and play the Red Sox in game 163. I'm picking the wow. Yankees in this. I, I, I think there's a lot of fire coming from both sides, but there's just some good juju based on that decision um, of wanting of would they'd rather go to New York. I mean, to Boston than play the Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. So we're going. So we're going Yankees sweep here on. On our part, I here. you would take the Red Sox. Ah, you almost had me. <laughs> uh, one thing that I, I I think none of us mentioned at all too that I want to throw in there is that DJ LeMahieu is out, and there's a good chance he misses the entire playoffs. Which in a normal year you say, oh, that's a huge loss for the Yankees. DJ LeMahieu has not been a very productive hitter. I didn't that. know that he was out. He is out with a hernia, so a sports hernia, Ouch. which is uh, he's going to need. Might be out as well. JD yes. Martinez, yeah, I believe he he is going to be out with an ankle injury. Yeah, at least for this game. He's still questionable. Okay, his injury much less serious though. Like DJ LeMahieu will need offseason surgery. They're they're trying to see if they can work him up to playable condition uh, later on in the playoffs. But DJ LeMahieu just hasn't been a very productive hitter for the Yankees. So that does mean that one of Tyler Wade, Rugnet Odor, and Andrew Vlasquez and probably a combination of all three based on matchups throughout the game will be involved, uh, which I think, you know, depending on depending on how it goes, it, th- those are some, you know, pretty dynamic guys in there. Uh, versus... Just make sure Rodando Dordas doesn't call time at ever. Oh, right? yeah. No, I don't think he... <laughs> I, I'm curious to see if he if he's done that since his <laughs> since his called timeout home run. Um, but that that's an important note too just with with big players missing on both sides or potentially with in the case of JD Martinez i feel oh. jd's was uh, he tripped over second base running out to his position man that <laughs> yeah that's pretty great that's the baseball guys telling you like stop trying to play off he'll just d just d <laughs> meanwhile, yeah. meanwhile Gio Urshela made maybe the most insane catch in terms of going all out for a ball uh, where he ran full sprint from in a lefty shift towards the third base dugout on a, on a pop fly makes the catch around his knees running full speed on the edge of the dugout on the spot where there is the entrance. There's no gate. He the goes, steps. yeah, the steps, he crashes straight into the dugout. No, nobody's sitting over there on the raised team. It's not like they moved out of the way. There's just nobody there. Um, and it was a very scary moment. Angel Hernandez flipped over the railing to it, almost <laughs> injured himself to make the call. It was a wild, wild play. I think that one's going to be remembered for a long time. And he's he's good. He stayed in that game and he's going to play <laughs> on Tuesday. So that versus J.D. Martinez, I think is going to be talked about a lot and it's going to make it even more hilarious. Uh, poor J.D. He's going to get like Gio Urshela goes into the dugout like a like a freight train, um, and ends up being fine. And JD had a little trouble before an inning running out to the outfield. Um, okay. Anyway, I, yeah, I have it's the Yankees. Like this. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but also like, it's not, it, there's no way it's just me. I have seen other people r- making this, this reference as well, just around. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's brought up in a number of occasions. Uh, tomorrow when JD Martinez is is being talked about. So I I have the Yankees for I mean other than the fact that I believe in my team, Garrett Cole much better starter. I do believe the Yankees have a better bullpen. I do think that that's what it comes down to. <laughs> really at the end of the day is he you got to get all uh, the outs and the Yankees have the guys to do that. For one game especially, uh they have more than enough depth to do so. Yeah, if people forget when the wild card managers kind of throw away all the, well, we got to save them for game two or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's no, we got to win this game. So if I have to throw so and so out there in the seventh inning, he's going out there. Um, so that that's the beauty of postseason baseball. Um, I also want to point out that uh, our other uh, friend and co-host who's not here, he also picked the Yankees, Alex Rudy. Yes, um, should we should we R- Farbo? Do you want to oh, give yeah. the Rudy picks for? For the rest of the way as yes. well. Okay, thank you very Absolutely. much. All right, 
you're probably wondering too. We just talked about the AL wild card, and I said that we were gonna do an entire playoff preview. Well, we're gonna we go we're gonna go we're gonna go in yeah we're gonna go in depth on the NL wild card too because that is you know the first matchup that's going to happen. But then everything after that is is pretty like up in the air. Uh, other than the other division series matchup, like we don't know exactly what's gonna happen. Uh, we're gonna definitely breeze through the rest of the playoffs a little bit more and and just give predictions and and go fast so in case you were wondering if this is going to be a three and a half hour long podcast uh no we're we're not going to do that it's only three hours (laughs) oh god okay all right national league wild card dodgers and cardinals adam wainwright and max scherzer two old men 2014 again two old men (laughs) slugging it out on the rubber uh, Max Scherzer is, oh, is, I would say, still a little bit, a little bit uh, closer to his his prime than Adam Wainwright, which who I don't know how he did what he did this season, but uh, he's definitely a different looking pitcher than Max Scherzer. So there's a lot of moving pieces here. I'll go ahead and preview the fact that Max Muncy on Sunday suffered an an injury to his wrist, which seemed left very elbow, serious. Left, no, oh, it was an elbow. elbow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he, his old, his, his whole arm got completely rammed on the base path on a throw to first base. And it looked like he was in a lot of pain. So do you know, or do the Dodgers know the time? He, is, on he's unlikely, he is unlikely to play Wednesday and unlikely for the LDS. Okay. They so they, they remain hopeful that he will play this postseason at some point. That's yeah. good. That's good to know. Because it, it, it looked like the, when the play happened, it could have been very bad. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that's yeah, not the case. Yeah, I don't know case. if we have an exact like, actual diagnosis on what happened. but No, but that's that's a uh, big deal. Matt, when we're talking about the Dodgers and the amount of MVP caliber talent they have, Max Muncy's right there in that conversation uh, with, with how important he is to that, that lineup. So that's a huge loss for them. Uh, and... Of course, last week, Clayton Kershaw as well went down with a recurring Brutal. injury, which it seems like he will just not pitch in the, in the postseason at all as yeah. the most likely scenario. So very big losses on on the Dodgers side there. The Cardinals really don't have any anything like that on their end of things. They're They're riding high. They had a 17-game win streak just this past month so two very different uh momentum swings i guess going into this game but the dodgers are the dodgers so i I need to ask you ray what what are dodgers fans looking at like who's who's everybody watching who's who are people concerned about like what what's going to need to happen here i mean it's it's the offense um the dodgers won seven straight they put up a lot of runs in these past few games and you know the offense is hot and sometimes the offense just kind of disappears and, and a lot of it has to do sometimes they just run into a good pitcher and you know it's baseball and daughter fans like oh we should be scoring five runs a game it's like sometimes you got you can only score one or two but um if the offense can show up again against wainwright and uh you know scherzer can even pitch solid he, he's getting hit a little harder lately but if uh they they can they can get to Wayne right get to that Cardinals bullpen and just kind of stay hot. Trey Turner is on fire right now in the middle of that order, and like Mookie and Seager are playing well, and and you know pretty much everybody's playing well. Losing Muncie hurts, but um you know you either get Pollock or Taylor in there or Lux in there in the outfield if you want to play Bellinger at first, or if uh, who knows you might get Pujols in there. Hit a big home run against the the Cardinals in the in the wild card game. I'm gonna be there That'll on be Wednesday. Hilarious! It's, it's gonna be exciting. Oh, you are gonna be there. That's awesome. Yes, nice. That, yes, I am looking forward to October baseball. As as many updates about that as we can get, because that's that's gonna be crazy, man. The yeah. the Dodgers are the Dodgers, and I think is it fair to say that the Dodgers fans and just the Dodgers in general, will be very disappointed if they cannot absolutely obliterate Adam Wainwright 
and his yes, ninety mile an hour have fastball. Most confidence in the world, but the fact that it's the freaking Cardinals who just eliminate us every single time it seems. Um, Adam Wainwright, who has a fountain of youth this year, and like you know Cardinals, and now Joe West is behind the plate, so Adam Wainwright is going to get a foot off the outside corner. So oh no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it like the Dodgers, Dodgers and Dodger fans should have all the confidence in the world, but it's just like all the factors going into it it's like it should be a pretty easy win but it's a one game wild card against a team that just i don't know has you know devil magic yeah they're they're the yeah yeah they're the other devil magic team yeah through so a lesser sample size since they're not division opponents the dodgers are four and three against the cardinals this year but i think everyone can see like even with muncie being out Dodgers are the Dodgers, like you said. Embarrassment of riches um, throughout their roster. And also, I don't... Some people were uh, have been talking about how Max Scherzer has been shaky in his last couple starts. I, I don't think that's a, that should be a concern whatsoever uh, coming into this start. I, Max Scherzer is Max Scherzer. He's, he, and, he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll show up for this start. He was at the um, the Chargers Raiders game today. Hopefully, Justin Herbert sends him some some good juju. Trey and, Turner was uh, also there today. Uh, Trey Turner was also there. So, um, I I don't think Max Scherzer is a concern. Uh, Ray, you're the Dodger fan, so you know this team inside and out better than all of us. Um, Julio but... Julio who, who is also available tomorrow. One of the, I I mean everyone's I'll, available. I'll respect to Mariano Rivera, but like greatest postseason reliever in history. Um, for a single postseason. No, ever. <laughs> wow. I mean, Mo, Mo played in a few more than Urias, I think, at this point. Yes, but Urias has not given up a game-winning hit in the World Series, so there's that. Not yet. you got to play a little more. Uh, let's let's get to the predictions, though. Does do any of you not have the Dodgers? I, yeah, I think it's another sweep. Another Dodgers. This, this one's a sweep of the Dodgers. If oh, the I'll Dodgers well. lose this game, I'm just I'm going to be very sad because the NL side, you know, Cardinals if they're able to take him out, they got they got a good enough team whatever. It's not going to be the same without the Dodgers there as the final boss on that side of the league. I'm sorry. Because now nobody we'll, comes we'll... close talent-wise in the National League especially. The Giants don't well, even come close talent-wise. What I'll say is um, if we don't get... If we have these two teams in the AL West and we don't get the Dodgers-Giants rivalry in the ALDS... NLDS. Uh, uh, in the NLDS, sorry. I keep saying AL. Mm-hmm. NL um, in the NLDS. That's when you might see some movement on the MLB side to at least some conversation about the CBA and playoff structuring, uh, division structuring, whatever. Um, That's when you might start seeing stuff like that. When a team, the MLB is counting on being on for its prime time times. Isn't that's when you're going to start seeing that. Yeah. You could argue the same on both sides. If, if we're just wrong and the Yankees and Dodgers lose these games, and it's going to be like, what do we do? What what I don't, we don't, we were not prepared for this. We didn't we didn't think this was possible. Um so, yeah, I mean, the Dodgers are the Yankees of baseball. So, yeah, according to Alex Rodriguez, that's I I I do I do think there is a reasonable amount of confidence going in here, but anything can happen. One game, it's going to be crazy and I'm looking forward to it. All right, that's the wild card matchups. The rest of it, we're going to breeze through at a much more expeditious we, pace. We all have the same ALDS matchups. Yeah, that makes it wow. easy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Rudy also had the Dodgers, by the way. Yeah, I said that. You did. Okay, I wasn't listening. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm always listening. All right, so the ALDS matchups. Just when he isn't. Let's start with the one that involves... Uh, two teams that we we just haven't talked about yet, and that'll be the the White Sox and the Astros. You got the newcomers, and you got the the long time playoff heavy hitters in the Astros. Um, 
we've talked about both of these teams a lot throughout the season, but one thing about the Astros that, you know, we're at the point where we really have to give them the credit where credit is due because last year they didn't, fi- they finished under 500. They made the playoffs. They, they did their thing in the playoffs still. And we were like, this team is not the same. Like they got a little bit lucky. They had the experience in a, in a very weird year. Um, we didn't know if that was going to happen be possible for them to do it again this year to get to this point uh they just absolutely crushed opposition because they have maybe the best lineup in baseball and we just talked about the dodgers that if you could probably argue that the dodgers have a stronger lineup the astros are right there though with just the sheer depth of awesome offensive production that they have with altuve basically looking as good as he did when he was an mvp um, winner. I was going to say candidate, but he won it. Um, you have Correa, who's having his best season ever. You have Jordan Alvarez, who is kind of just settled into doing what he's really good at doing, and that's crushing balls. And, you know, that's that's all he does. Kyle Tucker, I think, is the biggest addition here because he truly broke out. He actually won Player of the Month in this last month of the season here. And that was about as good as you could hope a top prospect could pan out for you and in the kind of production that they got from him. So that helps as well. Yuli Gurriel won a batting title somehow. Uh, I don't really know how that happened. And then, oh yeah, Alex Bregman, who missed a lot of time with injury throughout the year. is We know what Alex Bregman can do in the playoffs especially. So scary, scary lineup. Uh, and you look at the White Sox side, also very scary, but with a lot of less familiar playoff faces um so i it it really is just you know the old versus the new who's going to have more firepower uh on both sides of things uh do do you guys have anything else to add maybe about things that i glossed over um i didn't talk about pitching um, at all so (laughs) the yeah so the main thing i this series comes down to is uh you hit on it that the Offensive firepower on both sides is there. Um, this series comes down to pitching. Uh, the I I was just curious. I also found this website right before we started recording this podcast, so I've been mentioning head-to-head records a lot. But the Astros have a 5-2 and two record against the White Sox, and I went back and looked at some of those games, and it looks like it seems like the Astros, at least in their wins, they handled the White Sox pretty well. But it... It's a lot closer than it looks, and I think um, it ju- it all comes down to who has a better um, pitching staff, who has a better bullpen, and I mean, when you have Craig Kimbrell and Liam Hendricks down there, that's that's a pretty good one-two punch in the eighth inning to shorten the games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I do think White Sox have the edge on both sides of the the pitching matchup there in bullpen and starting rotation. Their starting rotation. Yeah is one of the best in baseball. Uh, you go one through four, and then you still have Dallas Keuchel left on the table there, who, you know, not as good as he once was, but an experienced playoff pitcher. He's not going to start games for them uh, with with their rotation of Giolito, Rodone, Lance Lynn, and Dylan Cease doing what he's doing this Dylan year. Dylan Cease finished third in the AL in uh, strikeouts this year. He, he strikes out a lot of guys. He really does. So... The White Sox do have a huge pitching advantage, but the the one worry is that the Astros seriously just do not care who's pitching against them in any game. It seems uh, throughout their their playoff history, like they'll they'll take it to anybody. So I don't know. I think we just go straight to predictions because um, well, we're not trying to spend too much time on. Well, this. Th- there's that too, and I I really don't know <laughs> if there's there's much more to say other than it's gonna be a slugfest. I don't think there's any Absolutely. way that it, it it turns out being a, a very pitching centric uh low scoring series, even with even if the pitchers come to the table and do their job. So who are you taking, Ray? I'm taking the White Sox mainly because I don't want to pick the Astros, but I I mean That's fair. I think um I you know short portion at, at Minute Maid uh, Eloy's gonna hit like three or four home runs, and that the White Sox pitching is gonna do just enough to to um 
to keep to 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 win this uh series mm-hmm. um uh the offenses are pretty even i would say but the the pitching for the white Sox i think makes a difference not necessarily low scoring but like enough to shut down some some leads mm-hmm. all right for bode um the i'm torn on this one i think this is the only one out of all of the matchups so far at least that i mean i, I don't know about any of them but i genuinely have no idea where to lean i'm going to take houston okay um, i i think playoff experience does come in i'm kind of breaking my own rule of always preferring teams with the with that have the advantage on the pitching side um but i I don't know. I I think Houston's short short porch, like Ray said, um, they're gonna come out guns a blazing, and they're gonna um kind of wall up the White Sox quickly, and then before the White Sox have a chance to recover, Houston's already won their third game. Hmm. So that's that's where I'm leaning. But this is gonna be a pretty solid series between two very good teams. Yeah, and it is it is probably one of the closer ones, like you said. I am going to take the White Sox too, but I do think it is because of the slight edge in pitching, and that that is a young and hungry team, right there. You know the the Astros Absolutely. are pros. They they've been there. They're they are hungry too. Don't get me wrong, but the White Sox have have a little bit of a different kind of energy. You've got this you've is- got guys that are that are young and and just fearless. And you, you talked about Eloy, you got Luis Robert, and then you do have the experienced guys that have been waiting for for their chance to do something big, you know, with Abreu and Anderson and Yas- Yasmani Grandal is is has been awesome for them behind the plate and with the bat. Um there's I'm probably just glossing over other like really really good hitters as well, uh, in that lineup. So um I, I think the White Sox are gonna are gonna have that like too young and, and too fearless to uh to care about what the Astros have for them, and they're gonna take it. And then Rudy had which team? The White Sox. White as Sox well. as well. Okay. Um. So I I'm the only one that uh wanted to be different. It's the first time in the predictions. Woo! You did it. <laughs> and on the other matchup in the division series, we're gonna have. Well, I guess all of us think it'll be the Yankees, and it'll be against the Rays. Oh boy, uh, Ray, who do you think is going to take that one? We just saw a, a matchup over the weekend, which, if you watch that, it would be an easy answer. Uh, but you know that's not how it works in the playoffs. No, I, I, I I'm still going to take the Rays though. Um, they just win. <laughs> I mean, I, I know we we call the the Red Sox the the Giants of, of the AL just because. They weren't supposed to be that good, and they end up in the playoffs and and performing well. But I mean, you could argue that's the Rays too. Like the who, Rays were doing it before the like, Giants were doing it. Exactly. Like what? I mean, Zanino is a thirty homer guy. Apparently, uh, Wander Franco's unreal. Um, you got McClanahan who who's pitched well. Shane Baz, who I believe will be eligible for the postseason. I think they probably pushed that through. Um. Because he was an injury replacement, he wasn't just a ran a September mm, call. Okay. Up. Um, I mean, it's it sounds like they're lining him up to pitch. So, uh, it's the the Rays. I was listening to, um, I was watching the Chris Rose and Trevor Plouffe do this thing every morning, or mm-hmm. at least a couple times a week, where they have Instagram lives, and they were talking about a stat with the Rays. Well, they didn't do it and, today. uh. Yeah, yeah, they didn't do it today. Sorry, um, <laughs> but they were talking about a stat with the Rays that they have used as many pitchers, or maybe at this point, maybe by the end of the season, it was different as the Arizona Diamondbacks this year. And normally, when you're using that many pitchers, uh, it's because you don't have a pitching staff, or you have an injury, or you have just a bunch of minor leaguers coming up. And the Rays have a formula. And I th- like you said, they just win. They're they're going to be solid. I think uh, not to cut you off um, before, after you made your prediction, but I I think this is 
a team that's just not talked about because of how great the Giants have been. But the Rays are the Rays, and they'll be very hard to beat in this playoff. So that's the thing, right? Is that you, is that you taking the Rays? Yes. Okay. Tampa Bay. So that, yeah. so that I, I mentioned, I mentioned what you and I were talking about the other day mm-hmm. on our own. Is like, like, can you name the playoff rotation for? No, <laughs> like they lost their playoff rotation from last year because we... Snell and Morton are both on different teams, and Glasnow was broken. Um, it's so it's like it's McClanahan, I guess Shane Baz, if he if he does become eligible, and like I don't know. <laughs> See, the funny thing is, like you say, playoff rotation. With the Tampa Bay Rays, it does not matter. <laughs> um, yeah, they, you're going off of what's their what's their one to two inning rotation for yeah, they, every yeah. second inning. They don't see a rotation. They're like, yeah. oh, this guy's X amount better. We're gonna put him in now. Um, I I'll tell you this: if if Ryan Yarbrough is the one to shut the Yankees down, if it comes to that, I'm, I'm gonna be a little upset. The rest of those poetic. guys in there. You know, I it really does seem seem almost unbelievable how much production they've gotten from guys like Colin McHugh, Michael Waka. Um and some of some of them it is more believable, the types of relievers that they, they have. They're they're insanely insanely talented pitchers. Um it's it's more those guys that really get to you, you know? The ones that you're like they were nothing spectacular on these other teams and now they're good with the Rays, like What's going on here? I mean, Waka ERA wise still wasn't fantastic with the Rays, but they used him how they want to use him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I was gonna say, I was gonna say as well. You talk about the way that they kind of redefined bullpen usage and its fluidity. the The plus side, which I think really does hurt the Yankees every time they face them, is they give them zero chances to make any adjustments because you see a pitcher, you know, you're not gonna see him again in that same game. You just know. So you have no opportunities to make adjustments. The downside is, which it never seems to backfire on the Rays, but who knows, it, it could at any time in theory, is that if you switch off of a guy who's good, like you, you're, you're, quite, you're relying on so many more guys to just be nails for you. And that's, yeah, that's a huge trust thing. But if, if one guy just implodes, then your, your plan isn't looking so good. It kind of defeats the entire purpose of it, in fact. So, you know, that's that's where it, it gets you get into muddier waters is when you you don't have enough options to to feel comfortable doing something like that. The Rays are totally comfortable doing it, and that's exactly what they'll do. I'm I would be I'm going to be on the lookout to see if any Rays pitcher throws more than three innings the entire series in the division series or throughout the playoffs. Honestly, they live and die by that formula and i've said it before i'll say it again and we compared them to the giants a couple times already uh Farhan zaidi was with the rays at some point uh, I, don't, I don't know if he was with this same regime but uh, was Farhan zaidi with the rays i thought he was he was A's. friedman is um, oh friedman was with the rays friedman is and, Rays. yeah Farhan okay. zaidi was athletics well i'm these are among the smartest uh Op, like baseball ops general managers in in the sport and it shows and yeah okay i'm taking the yankees because i i believe in them is the main reason behind <laughs> it the track <laughs> basically the matchups never look good because they have just a garrett cole killing lineup for whatever reason it may be but garrett cole might not pitch till like game three it, it doesn't matter they they have they have that going for them like our biggest weapon is almost always neutralized by this team and that's terrifying but so, it's only g-man Choi. It, it doesn't matter it, he still does it <laughs> it's still neutralized <laughs> and i don't know I, I think there is a little bit of a, a mental game there the yankees do though just in every other way have more offensive firepower and i think their bullpen is pretty darn good so i don't think they're gonna be outmatched here by the Rays per se, a no, lot they, of it really they, just I, is like in recent I, memory. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to imagine the Yankees having any any sort of success, but they have the, the Rays, guys. They have more than enough uh, roster capability to take the Rays down. Absolutely, and if they get onto yeah. one of those swings that they were on in the middle of the season, where we were like, "Man, these guys could do really special things," 
they could be walking out of this pretty pretty solidly. They are three games. They 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 did go eight and eleven against the Rays this year, but once again, as we've seen with a lot of these playoff teams, good teams go match up pretty well against good teams, and it's going to be someone's going to have to win, someone's going to have to lose. If it's anything like Not last like year, good. man, I'm just I, I'm just going to curl up into a ball. Like I I don't know if I can take I don't know if I can take it again, man. <laughs> It's, I, I think it's too much. Gonna, I, I mean, he's going to come out to a game five, and then Mike Brasso is going to rise from the dead, and then another home run Chapman. The ghost of Mike Brasso. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, man. The Undertaker music just plays and yep. just walks to the plate. Ale- yeah. Alex Rudy had the Rays beating the Yankees. Oh, what a. Okay. No, no, I'll, <laughs> classic, talk, I'll talk. I'll talk. I'm going to have a serious <laughs> word with him. No, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's pretty natural, honestly. So that's it for the division series on the al side okay. national league side um we'll, we'll go with the other teams that that hadn't been talked about the brewers and the braves dude both these teams are just they just look so out of place compared to every other team that we've talked about so far like the american league is so so strong and you know we've talked about the dodgers and, and the cardinals even just seem stronger than than this brewers team and this braves team which um, they're kind of just like, I'm, hey, ha- we got here. Cool. We weren't expecting that. I, Ronald Acuna is not playing this year. Marcelo Zuna, he 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 had some problems. He he's not there either. They're doing it with guys like Adam Duvall and Jorge Soler and like the emergence of yeah, and Jock Peterson. The emergence of Austin Riley, I think, is the biggest reason the Braves are there. He's been amazing. He's been great. And then Freddie Freeman. He's, he got off to a slow start this year, but he's back to MVP form, and he put up great numbers again this year, um, as Freddie Freeman does. Yeah, but then, you know, they're going to lean heavily on guys like Charlie Morton, especially. Um, he's he's really their their guy guy. They they do have Ian Anderson as well. Max Freed. Max Freed has been really good for them as well. So you've got some returners, you know, some very capable postseason starting pitchers there. Uh, but the, the Brewers, the Brewers, man, they the Brewers are sputtering. I do not understand outside of Corbin Burns and Brandon Woodruff, which if they're on, they could just be two wins because they're <laughs> they're extremely talented starting pitchers. Corbin Burns, dude, might be the best pitcher in baseball, like especially going into this uh, this matchup and just in, in general going into this playoffs. I, I don't think any team or there's any pitcher that a team would be more afraid of running into than Corbin Burns. Maybe Max Scherzer, but even he seems a little bit more, I don't know, exploitable than, than Burns and the kind of stuff he possesses. So outside of that, though, the Brewers really, yeah, they, like you said, sputtering. Um, They're lucky that the Cardinals didn't go on a, on a run any earlier because um, I don't quite understand how they were able to do it. They don't have Christian Yelich, the MVP. They have Christian Yelich. They don't have the MVP Christian Yelich, though, and they have until a year. I think there's something wrong with him physically, and he's just been kind of playing through it, getting the job done, it, like whatever it may be. They don't have that. So they're going to have to find production somewhere. Do, do you guys have anything else to add with these teams? Do you agree that these are the probably the two weakest teams in the entire playoffs? Uh, Yeah, I mean, this... In the Reminds entire of... playoffs? Yeah. Hmm. I think you're you're cutting them a little short. I mean, just how based on how the playoffs, I think. just based on how good the rest of the teams are, you could probably argue that. But I would probably that is the argument. Yes. The bro- <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no I, I would probably Not to describe I would what they've done say, this season, but I would probably say the Braves and the Brewers could match up pretty well against. All wild card teams, other than the Dodgers, or even with the Dodgers, like, um, I, I, I don't think they're necessarily the weakest, and I'm not foreshadowing at all. <laughs> all right, so who, are you, who are you taking, Ray, in this matchup? I, mean, I honestly, I'm, I'm gonna take the Braves. I think that lineup does more for the Braves, where they have a good enough pitching to shut down um Milwaukee's lineup. Uh, mm-hmm. Burns got knocked around and um. I mean, they the Brewers tried to preserve his ERA title just barely by uh, pulling him early before any more damage happened to him against the Dodgers. They got swept by the Dodgers this weekend. 
giving up a lot of runs. It's, I mean, the the Braves have been steady since kind of retaking the uh, NL East lead. I, I think the Braves, just with that lineup, just how their moves kind of reinvigorate it with Solaire and, and you know, Duvall, who they didn't want to start the year. Um, he, I think, yeah, I, I like the Braves in this matchup because I think the pitching can match up well enough, and then the lineup is just far superior. Yeah, I, I, I agree with pretty much everything there. Farbode, who do you have? Um, I, I agree with everything Ray said about how the offense could probably do some things, but man, I'm, I'm a believer. I'm a believer in Craig Council's staff, I mean, uh, team, and I'm picking the Brewers. All right. That's interesting. Yeah, I, they're they're going to do it for Devin Williams. I, I, they're going to do, do it for Devin Williams. Oh, Williams. my God. We haven't even talked about that. I forgot <laughs> about that. That's hilarious. That's another yes. reason why they, I think they might not win. But He broke his hand I, punching a wall. A... It's the third guy I, this year that, that think about broke it, his though. hand punching a wall in Major League Baseball. Yes. <laughs> The, See, this is one where the drywall wouldn't even help because, like, they wasn't even in the dugout. He, they was mad about something while they were celebrating the division. What are you doing? What are you? I agree doing? with you that the Braves have that offense and have have the pitching good enough to um carry that offense to um to a win. But this isn't the like a best of seven necessarily. I this is just three. You need three wins and you're out. And I think the Braves rotation has the potential I mean the Brewers rotation has the potential to just do that um for yeah, three games right but, away. But I but I think if they can win a three one game against Burns and, you know, be you know, take Woodruff out in, in a one one game, then like you beat one of those or both those guys and you know, like you said, all of a sudden it's a totally different series. And I they look beatable right now. Mm-hmm. Um I am taking the Braves in this one. They have they have all the postseason guys. They've got a lot of postseason experience there in pretty much the same form that it came last year. Well, I guess Charlie Morton, not the case, but this is a confident team in what they can do at the time of year uh, versus the Brewers, which I don't think they have any edge other than their their like their top top of the line starting pitching and their defense, maybe. They're, they they got a really nice defensive team, especially if they're going to keep sticking Jackie Bradley Jr. out there and forcing him to hit. Um, <laughs> that's that's a really good defensive team they have. So, I mean, that plays well, but uh, uh, the Brewers, I think, are the weakest team in the, the playoffs this year. Alex Rudy took the uh, Brewers as well. So this is the first prediction and the we're first split. On, on the NL side, and we're, the first prediction that we're actually at a true split. There we go. All right. Well, um, we're going to go through the last couple, which, you know, is, is a lot more up in the air because we have a, a lot more. Or, or we have one more National League one, too. Uh, but again, more deviations throughout uh, the rest of it. So Giants and all of a sudden the Dodgers. That's going to be a heck of a series if we do see it. First time they've met in the playoffs, by the way. So we, we've talked about the Giants kind of throughout the, the whole podcast, but... They get production from everywhere, and you, other than Buster Posey and Brandon, and the guys that were there the last time you won the World Series, you really don't know who's there getting the job done for them. So, I don't know, man. I just do not know. Like, Ray, based on the matchups throughout the season, just, like, how, how do you feel about that? Um, in a playoff context, is anything going to be different? It's always a playoff like atmosphere when they when these two teams. It's always play. a playoff like atmosphere, but like you said, outside of Posey and Crawford, Brandon Belt is hurt now with a broken hand. He didn't punch a wall. He hit, he got hit by a pitch. Um, like a man. Yeah, <laughs> like a real man. Uh, the the Dodger just with all the energy coming in, especially if they come, they're coming off a wild card win and still rolling Walker Buehler out in a game one. I think it's, I, I think it's gonna play out a little differently than than the regular season. But Giants, Devil Magic, who knows? But I mean, obviously, I'm taking the Dodgers here. Yep, that's that's a fair point. For Bode, who do you have? Uh, I am taking uh, the Devil Magic here. You are. Wow. You're taking OYBS. 
uh what odd year bs oh yeah yes yeah. um well no not completely but not foreshadowing um i I don't know. I, I I just believe in that devil magic for this year. Uh, Walker Bueller <laughs> is going to put up a great fight, like you said, Ray. I think they're going to have momentum going into this, and it's going to be pretty tough beating a team that's going to be like, oh, we're tied one one. Let's just trot Max Scherzer out there on like five days, four days rest, three days rest, whatever. Um, but I think the Giants can do it. They were pretty split in the season series, even though the Dodger fans probably don't feel like it was this year. Yeah, uh, it was pretty close. They, it, they lost that last it, series. It, yeah, uh, the Giants two, have two, won one yeah. more game two than them. It, yeah. And uh, that was a while ago. And the Giants haven't really played that great of team since they played the Dodgers. No. So and... they're like Dodgers have had to play some pretty good baseball against some uh, better teams. Um, and then you have the Giants who basically got to beat up the entire NL rest of the NL West coming down the stretch. So it'll be interesting Where... to see if they they can get up for something like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it's kind of like that. And then it's I I, I don't know. I, I like I said, I just believe in that devil magic for this year. Um, I yeah R- makes Rudy it interesting. Have the Dodgers moving on. He's got the Dodgers. All right. I have the Dodgers, too. I, I can't see an early exit with this team. It's it's so, 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 so strong. It cannot be understated how strong this Dodgers roster is. And I do think there's an extra gear in the playoffs to where, you know, if they're not able to take it to... You look at the Giants pitching staff, even, and you look at that, it's like, if this lineup's not able to take it to them, then there's something really, really wrong here. Because it is, it would literally be magic, because they just have have way too many guys, way too much experience, and yeah, it's crazy. They're they're like you, we talk about how deep the Giants are, right? And that's like they they get contributions no, from everybody. The Dodgers near are as deep as the Dodgers. Yeah, the Dodgers also get contributions from everybody, and it's a lot more contribution from yeah their stars. So it's and it's crazy. Like I said, um, the Dodgers have an embar- embarrassment of riches, and it would be pretty disappointing to see them go out. But I feel like if if it's the Giants of all teams that's going to take them down, it's going to be like, of course it fucking is. Um, so I, I that's that's where my pick came in. All but right. Once once again, we're back to the three to one split. Yep. We just we we passed the hour mark, guys. We we we're, we're gonna. We're going to make it under three hours, I think. Four hours ago. No, 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 no. We're fine. (laughs) All right. We have like three guests lined up. We're going back. (laughs) I wish. We're going back to the ALCS. We're going to jump back. I know we maybe it doesn't make sense, but we're going to do it. And you're just going to give the prediction based on the the matchups that you have. Ray Ray had the White Sox and the Rays. Okay. So between the White Sox and the Rays, who are you taking, Ray? Um, I'm gonna take the White Sox. Um, j- just to touch on what you were talking about earlier, Uwe, about how you know the Rays is it, or it might have been for both saying, um, like when you have to rely on a lot of pieces that can, it's not the strongest ground to stand on. So, I think with even less starting pitching this year, to go in a seven game series is going to be tough against a team with such established starting pitching. And anyway, we saw it break down for the, um. Raised in the World Series last year, basically Nick Anderson wasn't the force that he was in the regular season, so one less horse back there. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I think I think it's gonna go out in the uh, ALCS. I have the White Sox. All right, and Farbode, who do you have? I had uh, not the White Sox. Um, what well, they did move on for me. I th- I thought they didn't. Have no, first. you have the Wait, same. No, thought... You have the same matchup. I well, I thought I had Houston. No, no, on. Farbode took Houston. Oh. Okay, oh, I just well, wrote it down it's written wrong. wrong. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, thank God. Um, so, like I said, I had not the White Sox. I have the Rays beating the Houston Astros um, in the division series. I, I've I've said it countless times, so I'm not going to go in on this formula, formula, formula. Technique, technique, technique. technique. <laughs> technique. Basically. Um, 
uh, Alex Rudy had the Rays also. Okay, that's that's three. Wait, no, he, he had the White Sox. The White Sox, though, right? We got, uh, I believe so. So we got two two Rays, uh, pennant yeah. winners. I myself, I I had the Yankees instead of the oh, Rays. Oh, I wonder here. why. Uh, no reason. And the White Sox, but I do have the White Sox beating the Yankees in this matchup. Um. For kind of the same reason that Ray said, in a seven-game series, I I do not feel confident in the Yankees pitching nearly as much. Um, for for the one game and in the five-game series, I I do think they stack up pretty favorably, but you're gonna be relying on some heavy usage from their their top bullpen guys, and. It's a case where over a seven game series, like guys make a lot of adjustments. Um, you really do benefit from having strong starting pitching in in that situation. So um, I think I think we're looking at the White Sox there if it does come down to it. Uh, like I said before, too too Is young your prediction. The Yankees or the White Sox? The White Sox. They're too young and fearless oh, okay. to to care about their opponent, and they're just gonna they're just gonna go at them. Like I I think that's really what it's going to come down to is better starting pitching and just a lot more youthful energy really so that's that's the end of the line for the team that i believe in uh with these uh predictions so we'll we'll switch back to the national league now and do the same kind of thing ray you have the dodgers and braves round two i have dodgers braves which is i mean it's still a very good matchup, and you know, considering what happened last season with the Braves blowing a three-run lead, yep, th- three-to-one lead. Um, but Braves are slightly weaker, um, with without Acuna and Ozuna for differing reasons. Just say you're I mean, picking they, the Dodgers. You're a Dodger fan. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm but kidding. I'm, I mean, make an actual rational choice to, to pick the Dodgers. I'm, I'm messing with you. Um, the, I mean. That's a huge mental hurdle. Like we see it all the time in sports. Um, going up against an opponent needing revenge after what happened the year prior is a huge mental hurdle. And I don't think they quite get it. I think it's going to be a good series, but I think the Dodgers, again, they just, they're just going to overwhelm. <laughs> yep. And they're going to run into their, their buddies over that they're used to playing in the, the National League East all the time with Scherzer and Turner as well. To, to make things yeah. even more fun. All right, Farbo, what do you got? Um, well, it wasn't the Dodgers that could take it. You have an entirely different matchup, like by the way. You have NLCS matchup. You have the Brewers and <laughs> <I> Giants. <know. laughs> yes, it it wasn't the Dodgers that could take them down. No team in baseball could take them down until now. The Milwaukee Brewers are heading to the World Series. That's kind of gross. Okay. Um, <laughs> anything else to add to that? You'll see. You you can say it's gross, but you'll be eating those words um, in about two weeks. It'd still be gross if it happens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I wouldn't hey, I wouldn't feel so uh, good about that. It's gonna be the Willie Adamas uh, uh, revenge series in the World Series. Okay. Oh, I thought you were saying against the Giants. I was like, what? No, no, no. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, who did Rudy have? He had Dodgers Brewers. I don't know who he picked. <laughs> um, he had. Sorry, uh, let me pull that up. Uh, <laughs> high quality production here. Uh, uh, Rudy had the um, Dodgers moving on. All right, makes sense. And so my matchup that I had was also Braves Dodgers. It's the Dodgers. I don't have to say it again. The, the, the Dodgers. <laughs> So, just to go through our four uh, matchups, Rudy has the Rays and the Dodgers. Uh, Uwe has the White Sox and the Dodgers. I have the Rays and the Brewers. And then Ray has the White Sox and the Dodgers. So, some similarities going on. Obviously, all but mine with the Dodgers in there. Yep. And we'll, we'll finish it off. Ray, who are you, who are you taking? The champ. I mean, honestly, White Sox Dodgers is such an incredible, like, just sounding series. Like, um, <laughs> a lot of history there. 
Yeah, uh, I think they played in the 65 World Series, I want to say. That was the matchup there, but anyways, uh, just like really fun matchups. Like you see, you don't see Julito versus Betts that often, at least recently. I guess you saw him before. But um, oh yeah, I, I got to keep rolling with the Dodgers. Uh, it's it's back to back season. Um, yeah, it's, I mean that's an incredibly fun matchup there. The Dodgers are very good. And I don't think yeah. I, I'm going to go ahead and do mine too for the same reason because I, I I can't give the same explanation for every single matchup. They're the final boss. And I don't think the White Sox have what it takes. They they don't, they don't have the the user manual thing with with the guide on how to beat the final boss. Um, so that's the Dodgers. It's theirs. The yeah. Um, I mean, that's the Dodgers could do for Albert Pujols, but the Angels could not. So if that's a matchup, I, I'm easily rooting for my team up to five. Um, uh, just going, so you both had the Dodgers uh, moving, uh, winning the World Series. Rudy had the Rays beating the Dodgers um, as a part of a revenge from last year. And my no team since the Yankees several several years ago i don't want to do math right now has has won back-to-back world series but if there's a team that could do it, it is the dodgers which is why i'm picking the rays to beat the milwaukee brewers in the world series this year yeah it makes a lot um, of sense and... to me <laughs> <laughs> that might exactly. be probably the like i mean as good as the rays are this year like the least the least star, watched the least star powered uh um world series matchup you could possibly dream of out of, out if of this that season. If that is the World Series matchup, I guarantee you we will be seeing some movement with, with the CBA <laughs> this coming uh, uh, fall, postseason. And season. how? All right, we did it. We got the whole playoffs. That was that wasn't too bad. We did we did all right. Could it's supposed to be a long podcast? There's a lot to explain. We, we could have trimmed a little <laughs> fat, but I, you know I'm happy. I'm happy with all of the insight that we were able to give on these playoff teams the and sad part how wrong one, we'll probably be yeah yeah there's one sad part every one of our winners is just a repeat of last year um of like the matchup last year <laughs> like we didn't we we didn't go out of our way to at least be a little more insightful on the other people other contenders it's just raising the dodgers who are winning it all well no i mean only one of us that was rudy put um both back in the world series yeah no i'm not saying that's the matchup i'm just saying uh yeah the good team stayed the good they really did okay. yeah they got better even somehow um absolutely so yeah i'm looking forward to seeing who are the teams that we didn't pick at all the red Sox and cardinals world series yep okay Cool. No, it's not 2013 anymore. See y'all next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm so excited for this playoffs, man. Like, I don't know. The end of the season was everything you could ask for did not disappoint. You could ask for some tiebreakers maybe, but um all things said, this is going to be a wild wild playoffs and we'll continue to podcast throughout it. We'll we'll, we'll do some stuff in in the meantime, keep things uh engaging while baseball comes to a close so yeah for tonight though that is it for us thank you everybody for sticking around this long if you did make sure to leave us a rating or a comment or you know any any of that stuff depends on what platform you're on really but yeah we really appreciate that and again make sure to follow us at beat the shift bp twitter facebook and instagram because we want to hear your thoughts on all of this playoff insanity and uh, tell us why we're wrong, or if you agree with us, or if you just want to say hi. At Beat the Shift BP. All right, that is it for today. Thanks, everybody. One last time. As always, Farbode. Peace. <laughs>